Thursday night. For those of you that were there on the call Thursday night, um, and that the thought was how, since I just mentioned all of that, the thought was how I can weaken the flesh by becoming one with the Spirit, or one with God, or one with Yahshua, okay? So that's, that's what the thought was coming this past uh, Thursday. How to weaken the flesh by becoming one with the Godhead, okay? And I want to uh, recite some things that I think is important, all right? And this is also goes in line with enduring the end times. <clears throat> and we've been talking about this for a moment, actually, when it comes to the flesh. And uh, uh, because most believers, the, the issue is, it's not that God didn't do his part. It's that we, as believers, sometimes uh, we allow our flesh to dominate and to dictate to us. And we give excuses to our flesh to do that. I say this, and you all can say this with me. I believe one of the first places that we need to declare war, because we are in, the moment that you receive Christ, you enter into warfare. Whether you know it or not, you enter into warfare. It, you, you know, you've heard it said it comes with the territory. You know, it's just like, um, and, I, and I hate to even use this as an example, but um, I'm going to say it. It's just like joining a game. Certain things come with the territory. You know you're going to be in conflict with other games, so why would you join it? Why? You know there's a possibility that you would die, so why would you join a game? You know, and it's not just that. It's really anything that you know that has an ill effect to it. Why would we get involved with anything that we know has an ill effect to my, to my life, to my soul, to my spirit? Now, if I just open up a conversation and just let you guys just throw out some things, you will throw out a host of things, multitudes upon multitudes of things that we shouldn't do that we know has an ill effect. Right? But on the other hand, when it comes to salvation, which is something that we must receive from Jesus, we have to have it if you plan on going to heaven. All right? You got to have it. But when you receive salvation from Jesus, the moment you do that, you enter into a warfare automatically. Automatically. It's darkness is now going to be exposed, you know, convictions from the Lord, letting you know, hey, this is wrong, this is right, you know, walk in this way, you know, get off the narrow, uh, get on the narrow path, get off the broad way. All these things begin to come into fruition because you start reading your Bible and you realize that what I used to do is not the way to do it. But the issue is, is that we don't check our flesh. We don't check our flesh. And y'all looking mighty funny, like, what is he doing today? I'm doing what I always do. <laughs> I'm doing what I always do. I'm preaching. I'm teaching. I'm just going slow. Turns, I tell you what, stop the music. <laughs> maybe it seem more, maybe the, maybe the music is doing something to you, so just stop the music. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Maybe this is a little bit, little bit more, uh, do we need to start over? Like, you know, reintroduce the whole thing? Amen. So, with that being said, <clears throat> with that being said, uh, can I get some water? Hit me, hit me out with some water if you don't mind. So, with that being said, thanks of God, we have entered into a warfare, whether we want it or not, it's automatically going to happen, all right? So, therefore, if we're going to automatically enter into war, it seems that we would be automatically put into training, <laughs> You know, if we know we're going to be fighting, I can tell you right now, most believers, when they first come into their relationship with Jesus, don't know how to fight. I can tell you right now. 
None of us, when we first came to know Jesus Christ, knew how to fight, and some of us still don't know. I want to insert that one. Some of us still don't know how to fight. And I'm saying this, that one of the, the biggest enemies is not the devil. Point your finger at you. Because you give yourself so much lead way to where the devil wears you out. Now, who, who's on the scriptures today? Who's on the scriptures today? Let's go, let's go somewhere. Let's go somewhere. <clears throat> Y'all ready to go? I hope so. Mystery Babylon is in your dreams. Thank you, brother. Mystery Babylon is in the dreams. You're having these uh, sleeps where you can't wake up, you, you, you're stiff, and you can't move. Come on now. Somebody help me today. We in war. <laughs> Maybe it was just me this week. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it was just me. Hallelujah. <clears throat> but it's because a nest has been stirred. Here's the thing. What did I tell y'all? My week started off with me anointing my house. The next night, I was stricken, couldn't move. The, the third night, Mystery Babylon shows up, the spirit. We are in war. So guess what? I initiated the first punch, but he didn't back up. He came right, oh, okay. Oh, you don't want me to come in. Okay, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with your oil that's on your door. Hallelujah. I'm going to show you. Not only am I going to show you, but I'm going to restrict you to where you can't move. Apparently, apparently, God must gave him that authority because he don't have it on his own. Apparently, God must gave him that. It's, in other words, it's just like a Job situation. Hallelujah. God has to give him, if you're a believer, True believer, you're walking with him. I'm not saying that we don't have flaws. That's not what I'm saying. But you're not habitually living in your flesh. It's, it's not a habitual thing that we're doing. Hallelujah. We will have to deal with the flesh, I'm telling you, one way or the other. Because I promise you, if you want to endure the end time saints of God, the flesh is going to be your... <laughs> It has to be the one that is under your feet. Not only Satan, your flesh needs to be up under your feet. Because here's the thing. We know Satan is going to do his thing. And all we can do, according to the scripture, there's a few things that you can do to him. And you already know this because we didn't taught it. Just throw out one. Huh? You can bind. Give me another one. You can rebuke. You can cast out. All right? You can resist. Okay, so all of those things simply say he coming back. Even if we cast him out, he comes back to check you. In the scripture, God, Jesus, matter of fact, says this. So even if we get him out, he still has one more opportunity to, according to Jesus now, at least one opportunity to come and check to make sure you fill that house. Do you understand what I'm saying? Just because we are anointed and we are appointed and we, you know, we establish, the Lord lets us know you're going to have a battle and we got to endure you all. And I'm saying don't self-destruct. That's what I'm saying, really, if I don't say nothing else. Don't self-destruct. Y'all hear me? Don't be your own worst destruction. In other words, the enemy don't have to do anything because we, we, we destroy ourselves. But here's this. Here's this. Let me, uh, let me do this. <clears throat> Dennis, I think, let's go to Daniel because I think that's what I said. Let's go to Daniel because I want you to know that if, the reason why I make the statement that the enemy is going to wear 
some of the saints. It's actually a biblical scripture, Daniel chapter 7, actually. It says this. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Daniel 7, verse 25. It actually says. So, again, this is for the last three Sabbath, you all know, I've been saying from the scripture that we are going to have to deal with the enemy. For the last three sessions, I know, maybe even more than that, but for the last three sessions, we've been talking about this. That we're going to have to deal with the enemy. And you remember I said that I don't know what gospel that we're getting as though we are exempt from uh, conflict. We're not. And you remember what I said, even if you don't have conflict from outside, you're still going to get it. Remember, I, I made those comments. Even if we don't have the conflict from without, even you're going to have to do battle with the enemy. Either way it go, we're going to have some type of trial, some type of test. Jesus himself had it. The apostles had it. The prophets had it. All right. The, the believers that followed all had it. Okay. So that means we have to endure some things. We'll have to overcome some things. All right. It says, he shall speak great words against the most high and shall. So he's going to be speaking against God, the most high. All right. But yet he's also dealing with his people. So there is a season that God is going to give him. And book of Revelation talk about that. It's going to give him at least three and a half years to deal on the earth. All right. And this is why I'm saying and I'm teaching whether we are here or not, because even if we're not here, somebody's going to be here to go through that. And so, therefore, hopefully I'm, I'm leaving a a message behind. <laughs> Y'all didn't catch that. Hopefully I'm leaving a message behind for those who have to go through that. Hallelujah. To hear and to say, hey, you got to endure. You got to get your flesh under control. You, you can't be a penny party and not expect the enemy to use that against you. Okay? So the Bible says here, he says, he shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand. Watch this. Time, times, and the word time there is one year. Times with an S is two. Dividing of time is a half, three and a half years. So Daniel talks about three and a half years, and the book of Revelation talks about three and a half years. All right, let's go to Revelation real quick. Hallelujah. Let's go to chapter, let's go to chapter 13. If I'm not mistaken there, I believe we're going to do chapter 13. All right. Are y'all there? Chapter 13. Now, let's, um, let's start at, uh, let's start at, yeah, let's start right there. Let's, let's start at verse 7, 13 and 7, 13 and 7. And watch, watch the, some of the. Uh, likeness of Daniel 7 25 with 13 and 7 all right what it says it says it was given unto him to make war do I have to say it again we got two witnesses we got Daniel who we know talks about the end time then we have the end time book itself that we all subscribe to and believe in that God gave this revelation to John he says to make with the, who, who are the saints? I hope you consider yourself a saint. I hope you consider yourself a holy one. 
All right. It says to over. And power was given over. We talked about this when? Wednesday. Power over who? Kendricks, tongues, and nations. So we found out in, in our Bible study, in Kingdom Life Bible study, that Mystery Babylon is doing the same thing. That's why I said they are running together. Even though Mystery Babylon, the city is going to be destroyed, but that spirit is still ruling. That spirit is still going forth. All right, because the ultimate of that spirit is to deceive and God cause people to be controlled, right? That's what we, we found out. So it says, and it was given unto him, I'm reading it again, to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given all, him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. All right. Now, overcome, I need to talk about this because one of our, our subjects is how to endure to the end, right? And then we read in the book of Revelation chapter 2 and 3, every time, let's go there, Revelation chapter 2, and I'm going to read as many as I can with this because I want this, the scripture to, to speak to you, all right? I want the scriptures to speak to you on this. So keep that in mind about the overcoming portion, all right? Keep that in mind about that overcoming portion, Okay? Okay, <clears throat> go to verse 7, verse 7, in that same chapter that you're in, look at what it says. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So now, we just read a scripture in 13 where it says he overcomes the saints. And then we got a scripture here saying we must overcome. The overcoming is not that he overcomes us in a way to where our faith is taken. Now, for some people, their faith will be taken. They will draw back and they will go into perdition. They will give up on God. We know that from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, that people will give up their faith. We know this. We know this also from uh, 1 Timothy, I believe 1 Timothy chapter 3 or either chapter 4, where Paul says expressly the Spirit speaking that some will depart from the faith. So we know that there are some people that's going to do that, all right? But I'm saying to you, the overcoming part is not that he overcomes your faith if you are saints. It's not that he's overcoming your faith. He's, he's overcoming you because of his control and his power in the sense of getting his way in the system. Getting his way in the system. Being able to make laws and decrees like we just read and maybe even cause people to die. So he overcomes them in that way. Not that we give him our faith, but we resist him and he overcomes us by force. We resist him, but he overcomes us by force and try to make us bow down and serve him, but we resist that. Resist. Resist, which is one of our words we can do to the enemy. We resist that. Okay? So we still have to overcome that trial, that test, that temptation, that tribulation, all right, so we won't falter in faith. All right? And I'm going to say a couple of things about faith here in just a second. Okay? <clears throat> so I'm, I'm being very thorough, I guess, in some sense, all right? I'm not, I'm going to let the scripture kind of talk to us a little bit. All right, Revelation 2 and 11, just for the sake of time, I'm just going to run these off. Revelation 2 and 11, it says, He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be heard in the second death. Here's a word, overcometh again. You'll see that this word, at least in the, in the churches, is used seven times for seven churches. It's used seven times. Overcome, 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 overcome. In other words, he's saying endure. Right? Endure. Overcome whatever obstacles that's coming your way. I'm going to reward you. But the reward does not come until you overcome. Now, even though this was written to the churches back then, it's still the same for us today. 
We too must overcome. Our temptation may not be exactly like theirs, but we have a temptation. All right? And I don't know what yours is. It may be different from mine, or they all may be the same. We must overcome. All right? Look at, I say this, what's getting most of your time? All right? What's getting most of your time? If it's not God, that's something you probably need to try to bring under his jurisdiction. Okay? <clears throat> because whatever you're giving your time to, most likely that's what you're worshiping. Whether you're saying that I bow down to it or not. You know, people say, I mean, I mean, <laughs> since we get ready to go into Halloween and Christmas and all that, hallelujah, praise the Lord. You might say, well, I'm not worshiping the tree that's in my house because I ain't bound down to it. Well, the qu question is, you may not be bowing down to the tree, but why are you doing it? Does it, does it promote God? Do, are we trying to turn something that was back in the ancient time that was an idol into a blessing? So what am I saying? I'm, don't try to change what God has already deemed to be an idol. Okay? Don't try to change, you know, or... or Here's what we say, well, my grandmama done it, my mama done it, and I'm doing it too. No, some cycles are meant to be broken by you. I don't care how, who been doing it. If, if it's wrong, you stop it at your gate. It don't come through your gate, you stop it at your door. Hallelujah. Well, my kids, they look forward to this every year. Well... We have what is called <laughs> Passover. We have what is called unleavened bread. We have what is called, and they're all about redemption. They're all about salvation. They all have a meaning. Matter of fact, we have what is called, my God, Hanukkah, which they did pass out presents. Did y'all know that? When, when the Jews was about to be slain, hallelujah, but they wasn't because Esther prayed. Hallelujah. And there was so much joy that every time around that same year, they would were, they were send presents to one another to remind them of the deliverance. And guess when that happened? During December. But the enemy want us to get involved with what he's doing. And we, we're not, we, we, I know we're thinking about Jesus. I know that. But really, it was really Tammuz that was, ball, that was born in December 25th. And matter of fact, Tammuz is in your Bible, but we're moving on. All right. Verse 17, same book, same chapter. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcometh. All right. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone, and in that stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, save it he that receiveth it. Uh, same chapter, 26 and 28. Same chapter, 26 and 28. Uh, 26 through 28, I'm reading. It says, he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. I love this because he connects overcoming to unto the end. To him will I give power over the nations. And he will rule them with a rod of iron as a vessel of a potter shall they be broken to shivers even as I receive of my father and I will give him the morning star. Revelation chapter 3. So we're skipping over a chapter. We're in the uh, first section of that. And we're going to look at verse 5. And I said I have to skip through this because I just want you to see that. He that overcometh. The same shall be clothed in right raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. All right, skipping down. All right, skipping down to about verse 12, same chapter, same book. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God in the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven, hallelujah, from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Same book, same chapter, verse 21. 
to him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and sat down with my father in my throne. Seems like Jesus is trying to give us the same status that he has. All this is in red. Hallelujah. Are y'all with me? So we have to overcome some stuff, y'all. Again, I'm not trying to be deep today. I'm just talking to you. All right? We're going to have to overcome some stuff. It's, it's, a, it's a natural thing. Okay? It's a natural thing. Now, I want to um, jump a little bit into, again, we want, let's weaken this flesh. Because, again, I know I stated that. So let's weaken the flesh because the only reason why we won't be able to overcome, it ain't that God ain't doing his part. What, if, what, if, what, if, what, if, what, what else stood out? In those verses that we read, what else stood out? Let's see if you guys can pick that up. What else stood out in those verses, in every single one of them? What else stood out? Okay, if we overcome. Okay, but in the verse itself, in the verse itself, in those verses, what did we find out? It's, it actually says it in the verses. The Spirit is the one giving this. So I don't care what prophets, apostles, teachers, evangelists, anybody saying, nobody can overthrow the Spirit of God. If the Spirit of God says we must overcome, it don't matter what anybody else say. The Spirit is right, and everybody else is wrong. If the Spirit is saying that the church must overcome something, everybody else that tells you that we ain't got nothing to worry about, just keep moving. They are lying against the spirit. Now, I'm not up here today to try to bring some bad news to you. I'm just saying we must gird up ourselves in our most holy faith. I'm saying we must put on the armor of God. That's what I'm saying. So regardless of what we experience, my faith is intact. Now, now, let's do this. Let's do this. Hallelujah. Look at Matthew 26, 40. Again, we looked at this the other night. And um, y'all, let me say this. Just give y'all a good little chuckle right here. All right. I didn't start my recorder, so I don't know how long I've been going. <laughs> All right. 26, 40. Matthew 26, 40. So I don't know how long I've been going. So I guess I'm going to need somebody to help me because I really hadn't got into the message. So I'm not going to try to, you know, <laughs> because this portion is what I really want to give you. So everything I just said up to this point is really preliminaries. Uh, it's pre-message. So that means I'm not going to give you everything that I have. You're kidding me. Now, keep this in mind. We sung. Okay. All right. Okay, all right. So, so, so see, let me see that number again. Okay. All right, so maybe I'll take just a few minutes here. So I, I want your attention to be <laughs> attentive. Amen. And, I mean, we're humans. That's what we're dealing with, right? We're dealing with the flesh. It, it happens. I understand it happens. Okay? But that's why you got to build up the spirit. All right. Uh, okay. Then we're going to keep rolling in this, okay? It says, and he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and said unto Peter, what could you not watch with me one hour? All right, keep going. Keep that in mind one hour. Keep it in mind one hour. Watch and pray. See, we run across this all the time when it's, a, when it's attached to temptation or attached to the end time. You're going to see these words, watch and pray. I'm telling you how to endure the end time. You're going to see watch. You're going to see pray. You're going to be alert. You're going to be ready. You're going to be sober. Why? Because all of these things are important for you to see Messiah. All right? These are not just ordinary words that we just Throw around. No, they are words to impact your, watch this, to impact your life to see Messiah when he shows up. Are y'all with me? Okay. So he says, watch and pray that you, come on, 
that you, I'm, I know y'all can see it behind me, right? That you enter. So he says that my prayer in my watching has a connection to temptation to help me. Now, I just stated all that stuff in the beginning about I prayed, I fasted, I anointed my house, and I still got hit. So is the, what, what is the scripture saying? It says, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. Now, what happens when you watch and pray and temptation still shows up? Let me, let me, let me help you. When Jesus was baptized in the spirit, the Bible said he was praying before he got tempted of the devil. He was praying. He got filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately after that, the man is praying, y'all. He's praying. He's praying. Hallelujah. And he gets tempted right after that. Hallelujah. So it's not that if we pray or if we watch that temptation may not come. Now watch this. There are some prayers and some watches that does sustain you from a temptation. Some temptations are offered by the Spirit. Them the ones, hallelujah, you got to be careful. In other, in, what am I saying? Jesus is saying, let me, so I can make this plain to you. When Jesus was tempted of the devil, that was a spiritual connection from him and God going through a process to show that this guy can go through it and not falter. For us to see that the same Jesus that you all believe in is the same one that's going to go through temptation too. But notice, he is without sin. We can be tempted and be without sin. These are the ones that the Holy Spirit is instigating. But there are some that the Holy Spirit is not instigating where you have to pray and watch that you don't enter into those. The Bible says in, in Matthew chapter 6, hallelujah, pray, right? We're praying. He says, teach us how to pray. And they get down, lead us not into, lead us not into temptation or into the, this evil one, right? So sometimes, you all, there are, there's a different dichotomy there. But let's move on. So watching and praying, I, I, I explain it like this. Watch is not watching out there. Watching is in here. Did you, did you catch what I said? Watching is not out there. Watching is in here. God wants you to see him. He wants you to be caught up with him, and he wants to reveal to you. Do, do you think that, do you think that <laughs> when, when John wrote the book of Revelation, he wasn't watching out there. He got caught up where? In the spirit. And he was able, watch this, when he got caught up in the spirit, he was able to detail everything that was coming. Guess what? So he didn't have to watch because God had already showed him. Oh, God. Are y'all with me? And so you're watching. That's why it's, watch this. This is the reason why it's always coupled with prayer. This is why it's internal. Not that you don't see what's going on outside the world. You do see it. And not that you turn a blind eye to it because these things could be fulfilling prophecy. But your most important watch is not out there. It's within here. That's the reason why you're praying. When you're praying, you're not watching out there, right? When you're praying, you're watching within. You're trying to catch up with God. This is why the Bible says in the book of Revelation and also in the Gospels about hallelujah. Let, what, what did Jesus say? Let me just, what did Jesus say? Jesus said, I can't do nothing except what? I see what my father's doing. I can't say nothing except for what I hear. Both of those are watch and prayer. Watch, prayer. Watch, he's watching and he's seeing what the father is doing and he's praying, hearing. You got it? Okay. All right. Okay, um, let's, let's, let's go down. Okay, well, I guess I'm about to go in my book here. Matthews 24. So y'all grab your, your Bible. 
All right, let's look at verse. It says, watch. We're in 40, 40, let's go to 42. I think that's where we were. So let's just continue right there. Uh, no, 41. We're in 41. 41. It says, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. We're in chapter 26 of Matthews. Chapter 26 of Matthews. Watch and pray. All right. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the. So what is our title? What is our thought? How to weaken the flesh. So, so when we pray and watch, when we pray and watch this actually, according to Jesus own words, he says, your flesh, right? He said, your spirit is willing, but your flesh is okay. Now, in this sense, in this sense, what he's saying is, there are, oh God, what he's saying is that if your spirit is willing and your flesh is weak, Jesus is saying that these two need to be on one accord. Because we want our flesh weak, right? But Jesus says, the spirit is, but your flesh is weak. So what he's saying is, because of flesh, it is not, it, it's not, it's not joined in agreement with the spirit. Remember, what, what is our second thought as it relates to this topic? How to weaken the flesh by becoming one with the? So your flesh in this verse is weak to become one in agreement with the spirit. Because we want the flesh weak. But in this case, we do want to agree. I must come into alignment with what the Spirit is saying. Okay? Don't worry about that one because people are watching what you also are doing. Just, this one right here is good. All right? <clears throat> Hallelujah. This is where everybody's facing anyway. So, with that being said, now watch this. Watch this. He says, and he went, verse 42, and he went again the second time and prayed, saying, my, oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, that will be done. Y'all, we, how many times y'all heard this? No, seriously. How many times we heard this message as it relates to your will be done? We prayed with Matthews, your will be done. Let thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Or, y'all, seriously. When are we going to let this become our portion? No, seriously. Seriously. I, I'm not going deep right here either. I prom- <laughs> when is that? Th- <laughs> what Jesus is simply saying, I have a will and you have one. How many times have we said to ourselves, this is me. This is how I am. This is how, again, we, we mentioned it earlier. My mother, my father was this way, and that's, you know, that's just the way it's going to be. No, no, no. That's not the way it's going to be if you are a believer. If we are believers, when you come into salvation, hear me, when you come into salvation, again, most people probably don't know this in the beginning. But as you continue to walk, as you continue to read and learn, you find out you have come into a covenant relationship and that now your will is obsolete. It's been deleted. So it's no longer I. It's no longer me. It's we. It's me and the Lord. And here's the thing. The Lord sets the will for your life. He sets the will, which is your purpose, which is your destiny. And again, let me say this. You know, sometimes, saints of God, we, we can't be in, in the state to where, um, I put it this way. Okay, I'm reading this scripture, right? I'm reading this scripture right here. And it says, not my will, but thy will be done, right? Now, you read it. I read it. You read it. And we come away with a... Well, for me, that's different. For you, it's one way, but for me, it's this way. This is what it means to me. Let me say something to the body of Christ. 
every word that God speaks in this Bible, it means the same for everybody. It's not a different interpretation for you. And somehow, some way, when I read it, it's a different inter- In other words, when I read it, well, w- what he really meant was that as long as I agree with him so far, I can kind of do my own thing. Oh, you, it's the part, thy will be done. Oh, that's all the part you were. You missed that part. Thy will be done. Maybe you thought he was talking about your will be done. When, when he said thou, maybe you put yourself there. No, it's not our will, saints of God. And I know this is, you know, I'm saying it to me, okay, so you won't think I'm just saying it to you. I, again, remember, I'm on media right now, so it's, you know, other people watching, okay? Look to the person next to you and say, he, he's talking to you. <laughs> so you won't be talking to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay? No, seriously, though. But the body of Christ has this issue. Seriously. The body of Christ has this issue that when, 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 the, when the Lord says a certain way to dress, well, for you, it means, well, you, I can wear pants, but you got to wear a dress. You know, we make these discrepancies as though what he's, when I read it, I, I, I see it this way. And, 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 and I understand that because we got our own mind. I understand that. You better lose your mind, and you better see it the way God sees it. And quit making excuses for your flesh. That's what it's all about. We're making excuses for our flesh to act up. And then when the flesh act up, and we put it back in place, then you look at the one that's that's checking the flesh. Not you, it's the flesh. Peter and Jesus were like this. Jesus looked at Peter, that's the devil. Peter didn't get up, he didn't get upset with Jesus because he said that. Why? Because he knew Jesus knew what he's talking about. And matter of fact, Peter was, you know, when Jesus got taken in, Peter was kind of where everybody else was kind of hiding. Peter, at least. Although he denied him in the, in the sense of what Jesus said, everybody else wasn't even close enough to even get an opportunity to deny him. You ain't trying them close enough to even be tried. So why we ratting on Peter? At least the man went close enough to try to say, you know what, I know what he said about me, but I, I still got to get close to him. You know why? Because I'm going to get it right after it's all said and done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't pay no attention to these wrinkles, y'all, okay? I'm getting old. All right, I'm getting older. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm talking about old in the spirit. Hallelujah. All right. Okay, okay, all right. I'll read that. So, so, let me give you a point here. If you want to weaken your flesh, pray one hour. If, if you want your flesh to come, maybe I should say it another way. If you want your flesh to come into agreement with the Spirit, pray one hour without ceasing. Now, I mean, I mean, I'm going to help you. And I know some of you are saying, you mean just pray one hour? And, and that's, no, one hour daily. Daily. Not just one hour this Monday, and then, well, next Monday I'll pick it back up. That's your routine, Monday to Monday. No, 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 no. This is a daily thing. You know why? Because you're being tempted daily. You've been tempted daily. So it's got to be a daily thing. So if Jesus said that this is a a help to help you to overcome, all right, or help or to bring your flesh into, because this is what we're talking about, bringing the flesh into agreement right here in this chapter. He's talking about bringing it into agreement. It's so weak that it won't agree with the spirit. Okay. Okay. I promise I'm trying to find a place to end. Believe it or not. But, okay, let's look at, let's look at Luke 18. I'm just going to re- redo these, and then I'm going to try to give you some fresh stuff. Some of this is what I shared with you the other night. Luke 18, 1. Luke 18, 1. Eddie, are you keeping up with my time? What? Give me a bow. 
Okay. Are you since since we last talked? Okay. Okay, and I'm I'm just going to, you know, we're going to run a little bit. And he spoke a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not faint. So again, prayer is going to help you. To <laughs> again, y'all, I always say this. It ain't your typical prayer. This, this prayer is an, it's, it's, it's an encounter, right? Because <clears throat> if you don't encounter him, your strength is not coming. You must encounter him, okay? And I'm not saying you're going to encounter him every single time you pray, okay? But there, you, you have to come away with a sense that even if I did necessarily encounter him in a tangible way in my prayer, there are some times that when you pray, you walk away from the prayer knowing that you contacted him. You understand? In other words, there are subtle things that happen in the midst of your prayer that let you know he's there. Even though you didn't necessarily physically feel him, you didn't physically see him, but somehow, some way, spirit to spirit, he confirms that he heard you. Or he confirms that I'm in this with you. Hallelujah. He'll start giving you little thoughts. Hallelujah. I know for me, he'll give you thoughts. And let you know, I'm with you. He, in other words, sometimes you can be praying for some, and the answer comes in the midst of your thoughts, letting you know, I hear you, I'm with you, here's the answer. Little simple things like that let you know that you're there. And when you hear those little simple little nuggets, guess what you do? You don't faint. You're able to endure now. You can go on, maybe, you can go on for another month or two, because now you know the answer. Right. The reason why he's saying don't faint is because I'm going to give you something in the midst of while you're praying to keep you from fainting. Amen. All right. I know y'all getting a little weary and you ready to faint on me, but we're going to try to get this done. OK, I, I'm, I really want to get to something here. All right. Let's go to um, Proverbs. Proverbs. Proverbs 18, 14. Proverbs 18 and 14. Proverbs 18 and 14. Proverbs 18 and 14. Now watch what he says. says. The spirit of a man will sustain his weakness. But a wounded spirit, who can bear? I'm going to let Proverbs speak to you. All right? Proverbs speak to us right now. What did it say? The spirit of a man or a woman or a child will sustain his weakness. The same thing Jesus was saying. Hallelujah. He said the spirit is willing. It, in other words, the spirit is willing to sustain us. But if it's wounded... Who can bear? Who can bear? So this is why we can't stay what? We can't stay what? Come on now. We can't stay angry. We can't stay offended. Because in that place, my spirit is wounded. Look, look, y'all. Even if the person don't repent to you, you don't stay there. Even if the person don't come to you and repent, you better not stay there because guess what? You're the one injured. You injured. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah they lied on me. And I'm mad. You know, let me, let me give you an example. Y'all know this. I gave y'all this the other day. I was riding the four-wheeler about three weeks ago. They, they called the police on me. I know this is live. They called the police on me. Police came. He was talking very cool the first time. No problem. And I'm telling them, I'm like, man, we've been standing here for almost 50 years, and we've been riding in this field for 50 years. Okay? We have never had a problem. And he said, man, I understand. You know, I got four wheel of myself. He said, y'all go ahead on. I can't tell who the copy is because, you know. 
and hopefully they won't look at the report. They might figure out who it is. There's two of them came, so you don't do it. Yeah. So you can't try to, you know, but anyway. But check this out. No, I've just said that. As, so I went around, rolled a little bit more. Cop came again. So the first time the cop came because they said we had a wreck. I'm like, well, why you didn't call 911 to get an avalanche out there? And they asked me, you know, how you doing? Get the avalanche out there. No, the cops came. <laughs> I never did see the avalanche. The cop came. I'm like, where's the avalanche at then? You know, is it coming? Check us out. <laughs> okay. The second time, T, the second time, they said we hit somebody. We ran, we almost, no, we almost ran over somebody. Lie. Lie. They came out again. Well, they called us, said, y'all almost ran over somebody. I'm like, how we almost ran over somebody? And we two miles away from our neighborhood. And when you showed up, we just came out of the field. Nobody's there. Okay. It's the third time, you done struck out. <laughs> so I stopped at the street who was doing all the calling. And I said, I was on the four-wheeler. The four-wheeler was very loud, very loud four-wheeler. I guess we, we might have shut the Bible now. I'm, Jesus. I <laughs> so I'm at, the, I'm, at the, I'm at the driveway, and I stand up on the four-wheeler. I'm a black guy. Y'all catch, read between the lines. I'm a black guy. I'm a pastor. So I stand up on the four-wheeler. The four-wheeler is loud. So... I'm like, what's going on? You know, what's going on? That's exactly how it was. What's going on? Why y'all keep calling the cops on us? You know, like, what are we doing? And the lady starts saying something I never heard of. Here's my hand is on the back. I never heard what she said. Never heard it. And I said, ma'am, I can't even hear you. This 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 four wheel is loud. I, I'm I'm sorry, I can't hear nothing you saying. And the guy that owned the field was there. I'm going to get to the point about lying on you and what you still must do. <laughs> so I talked to the guy that owns the, the field. He's like, no, I don't want you riding in my field. No, no. Uh -uh. Look at them tires on that forward. You'll diss up my field. I'm like, I'm like, sir, come on, man. You serious. Come on. You s and I would say the name because I was saying the person's name. I'm like, Man, are you serious? <laughs> I said, okay, all right, okay, I got you. Four wheel is so loud, I just, it's like I stepped on the gas, like I burned rubber, but it didn't burn rubber. It's like, you know, if I was in a car, you took off pretty fast. So I just took on off, and I stopped at, at one of my neighbors that was riding with me in the four wheel. I said, man, I stopped down, and I asked them what was going on, and they, they don't want us riding their field. So I guess this is over with, you know. <laughs> so I went on to the house, basically. Next thing I know, the cops show up. And the, this is the words out of everything I just said. The words were, you cussed somebody out. Everybody in the yard was like, oh, no, 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 pastor didn't do that. I'm like, what? Man, cuss nobody out. What are you talking about? So there was a lie, right? You... If, if, if I didn't forgive them for that, they don't know what's going on with me. So if I would have took that, and, and I, was, I was ruffled. I was ruffled. I'm like, and I, I, I really let the person go that lied on me. I really let them go that really that second. I was more focused on the cop now. I'm like, sir, this woman is lying. Well, I need your ID. I'm like, you ain't get my ID. I did not. What you talking about? I'm like, you mean to tell me that you're going to take my ID off a of base of what somebody said? And I didn't cuss her out. Okay? I, I ain't going to do that. And <laughs> well, you said, you're a preacher, right? So he tried, guess what he tried to read? Proverbs to me. Be slow to anger. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, we, I'm like, bro, it ain't going to work right now, bro. <laughs> I'm upset. <laughs> that ain't going to work. And so my, my wife said, husband, this ain't worth it. I said, you know, no, I'm going to jail right now. I'm going to jail. 
Because if you're going to take my, you know, I'm thinking my mind was way out there. I'm like, you're going to put my name in a system for something that I didn't do. I'm like, well, I might well do something to take it. I'm not giving you my driver's license, so you might well take me on in. And everybody's like, this ain't worth it. It's, I'm like, this is my name. This woman is lying on me. <laughs> so my wife grabbed me. She said, come on, come on. She said, you got so-and-so, so-and-so standing right there, and they don't need to see you doing that because if they do that, it could, it could go another way for them. I'm like, you're right. Here you go. Here you, here's the license. And they wrote everything down. I said, Lord, have mercy. And I said, now, they, you got me gone now. <laughs> you got my stuff gone now. Go on, no, leave me alone. I mean, I said, then I started telling him everything. Like, man, I know this cop, this cop, this cop. I did a ride along, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to abide and see them. We're out here preaching. We're trying to help you. You know, I'm just going down the line now. Like, and he's like, yeah, I heard all that. <laughs> Give me. <laughs> oh, my God. He's like, Give it up, buddy. So I'm like, okay, all right, Jesus. And then, you know, th just the other day, uh, 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 for the, those of you on Facebook, I'm sure you're getting a kick out of this, but <laughs> um, social media, wherever. But anyway, just the other day when we was out doing outreach, we had a cop to come up real good. I mean, he just, he appeased everything, right? <laughs> he, settled, he settled everything for me. He said, sir, even if you cuss the person out, there's no law against you cussing somebody out. He said, I'm not saying that you did, but there's no law against that. So I understand why you might be a little upset, but you, you still have to give that information. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Jesus. Okay, y'all. All right. All right. It says, okay, let's, let's move on from here. Okay, I promise I'm going I'm to <laughs> I'm finna wrap this up. Uh, so I'm going to have to finish this some other time. But let's check out uh, Proverbs 16, 8, uh, 1632, since it's very close to us. We can just turn a couple chapters back. 1682, watch this. So Basically, I told y'all that story because I didn't allow the spirit to sustain me. I didn't allow it. I was ignoring it. But at the same time, I'm hearing my wife, hearing everybody around me. My brother was there. <laughs> my oldest brother. Hallelujah. The only one. Anyway, he said, this is what he said. Got in his car and drove off. <laughs> oh my goodness. He's like, you fighting this battle by yourself, buddy. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and then, then he started calling, right? <laughs> Then he started calling, like, okay, I'm gonna, let me check on him. Let me make sure everything's good, though. And read it. Read it. Read it. I know we, 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 we kind of turned this into a little moment right here, but, but check this out. Read it. The wife, the wife, the wife. I'm saying the wife for those who are social media, right? <laughs> she got in the truck beside him. Never said a mumbling word. <laughs> she like, I know she was like, oh, pastor. You, you, you. <laughs> oh my God. Boy, read it like, should I leave? Should I not leave? I ain't saying nothing. You know, like, Pastor, you, you might just, you lose, you're going to lose this battle right here. Just let it go, okay? Let it go. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Okay. Amen. But I, I <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, yeah, man, it's funny, though. But I was just telling him every, everything. I'm like, man, I was just in court just the other week, and this cop helped me, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, man, come on, man. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Anyway, Proverbs 16, 32. It says, he that is slow to anger. Here it is. That's what he read. <laughs> he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth the spirit than he that taketh the city. Y'all, this is important. I know we just had a little five, ten minute chuckle there, but this is important, seriously. Because we might have, you know, my, what, once everything was over, my family was talking, you know, like, you know what, you know, this is just a test, and you got to be careful. Because it might not go this way every time, all right? And they're right, they're right. Some things you, 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 you might not want to battle, okay? Just let it go, 
and live to fight another day. All right? Amen. So he that slow, it wasn't exactly this one, but it's the one that deals with it. It says, he that slow to anger is better than the mighty. But check this out now. So basically he's saying that if you can control yourself, you're better than the mighty. And the mighty here is mighty men. Okay? So basically he's saying because, watch this, because anger, if you let it go long enough, it's going to tap you over into Lucifer, right? Right? So if you can tame that, guess who you're taming? What? You, you're taming yourself, but you're also taming the enemy. You're subduing him. What what you say, Terrence? The earlier you were saying some of those words? You're, you're, you're subduing the one that can actually provoke you. All right? He says, and he that ruleth his spirit, then he that taketh a city. That's a powerful thing. That's a powerful thing. So when we, when, we, when we allow our spirit to be groomed, now I got, I, I got to say this, if we allow our spirit to be groomed by, hallelujah, the word of God and by faith, then this will cause you to be strong in the Lord. Now I'm, I'm going to give you a couple of things here. Proverbs, let's go stay in Proverbs 25 and 28. Proverbs 25 and 28, since we're there, let's, it ain't going to take but a second to go through this. Proverbs 25, 28, and then I'm just going to give you some quotes that I wrote down that I believe the Spirit gave me, and we'll stop. It says, a, a lying tongue hated those that are afflicted by it, and the flattering, no, 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 I'm in the wrong spot. I'm in 26, all right? Uh, we're in 25, verse 28. It says, he that have no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. So we see that your spirit is the ruling factor. So what, what is our thought? What is our thought for today? How? How to? Or how to weaken the flesh by becoming in agreement or oneness with the Godhead or with the spirit. Okay, so we, we read these three scriptures that says that if your spirit is intact, like it's supposed to be strong in the Lord. Right. Then it will it, it will protect you. It, it'll be stronger than an army coming into a city. It, my God. Mm, 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 mm. OK. All right. Now, let me just read you a couple of quotes here. OK, you, you ain't got to write these. I'm just reading this faith. Once it is applied by God or the Godhead, it has needs. This is important. Once faith is supplied by the Godhead, if you're writing, it has needs. Did y'all hear what I said? Your faith has needs. I know you never heard that before. Your faith has needs and have to be built up for it has manifold purposes it must be fulfilled that must be fulfilled and several operations it desires to work okay I'm gonna repeat that faith once is in other words the Bible said God has given every man a measure of faith that's what I'm referring to He's given every man a measure. So if he's given you a measure, it has to be groomed or grew or matured. So that means even though you got faith, it has needs. Okay? All right? And we're going to, in a minute, and have to be built up. How, how, do y'all believe what I'm saying? Think about some scriptures that, just, that should be popping off. When the church, I mean, when, uh, uh, let's just use Peter since we talked about Peter. When, when Peter was tempted to walk on water with Jesus, or, you know, inspired, I should say, inspired to walk on water, with, and, and, and b b before that, we, we run across them having some wave issues, some struggles in the wave. Let's go to that one where Jesus is asleep, and they go and wake him up. And what did he say? Oh, ye of little faith, right? Okay, so that means their faith was being tried, okay? So that means their faith had a need, Okay, and that need was to believe, to believe that they had power to rebuke it, right? But they woke Jesus up, and Jesus says, you got a little faith. Now, you would think, wait a minute, 
if you go and get Jesus to do something, in this sense, you would think that, you know, you, you came to him, it's okay. See, some stuff he's giving you the power to do. And when you go and get him to do something that you have power to do, he says, you got little faith. All right? Okay. So the faith has needs. Okay? It has to be built up, for it has manifold purposes it must fulfill. Okay? And several operations it desires to work. Okay? Now, you can just write this down. We're not going to be able to go here. Romans 8, 25, we'll pick this up Tuesday or either Thursday, all right, or maybe even Wednesday. One of those days, we'll see. But you can write these scriptures down, Romans 8, 26 through 27, the spirit helps my weakness. We read that like twice, like two or three times. We didn't read that. So this confirmation that the spirit of God will help me in my weakness, help me in my infirmities, all right? So in Proverbs, he said, help me in my infirmities, help me in my weakness or sickness, and then right here, help me when I feel weak, when I can't pray. It'll help me there. All right. So it'll help my prayer life. All right. Uh, write, write this down, Jude 120. Praying in the spirit builds my faith. Okay. Romans 12, 3. I'm going to read this one to you. For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. There's our word again. Hallelujah. According as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. All right. Hallelujah. Now, 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 now. I got to read this, but I won't be able to expound. Faith doesn't run on automatic, nor on autopilot. Now, I said that about warfare is automatic, whether you want it or not. But faith don't run like that. Faith is not on automatic. You wake up in the morning, faith is automatic, it's just automatic. No, 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 no. Faith doesn't work like that. It needs to be worked. Okay? Faith has to be worked. That's why I said it has a need. Faith doesn't run on automatic nor on autopilot. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus, help me today. It needs continual spiritual activity whereby it can get its exercise in and from the spirit. Faith without works is dead. Hallelujah. Faith without works is is dead. So it's just like, you know, like when you find it, flying an airplane, you, you put the airplane on all the pallet, you put, you know, you, it's just cruising. And ain't, faith ain't going to work like that. It ain't going to work like that. You're going to have to work. You, you're going to have to take control of that plane. You're going to have to land that joker, and you're going to have to lift that joker up to get it off the runway. All right? Now, once you get in a certain place, you might can cruise a little bit, right? But ultimately, every time you go up and down, you're going to have to work it. Every time you go up and down in life, you work in that thing. Every time you have a situation, that's for you to work it, hallelujah, to excel, decel, to pull out, hallelujah. Okay? Now, I got scriptures to that, but I, I'm just going to, I'm reading you my thoughts. All right, on what I felt like I was getting through meditation. Faith is one of the empowerments of the Holy Spirit's attribute, but it must gain its authority and power from love. All right, one of the ways that faith operate is by the word of the Lord. Faith is activated by hearing from the word of God. In other words, the word of God to faith is like the rain in the sun to the earth. Faith Hallelujah, or the earth, let me just say this, the earth and its inhabitants cannot live without its support. Rain in the sun, we can't live without it. Okay? Amen. Let me, I, there's more here, but I, I'm going to leave it with, with that right there. I'm going to just leave you right there. Saints of God, it is my heart's desire, not only for you, but for myself, that we endure. And I pray in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Ghost, that everything that is captivated our flesh be rendered powerless. 
be rendered without influence, be rendered without impact on our decision making. May the power of the blood and body of Jesus sever, disconnect, discontinue, my God, the influence of the flesh. The more we become one with the spirit, the more we're going to walk in God. And basically, the scripture says, be led, walk in the spirit, be led in the spirit. And live in the spirit. There are some principles that we can pick up from those things, but we don't have time now. So I decree and declare to you right now, raise your hand right here where you are. That father is not my will. Now here, here we are again, saying the same thing that we didn't said a thousand times. Father, not our will, but thy will be done. We said many times, it's not about I, it's about you. Father, may it be so. May it be so. May it be so that every time we're in the valley of decision, that we look beyond ourselves to see the need of the body, to see the need of the body of Christ, the Messiah, Yeshua, the Word of God. Hallelujah. The influence of its... Ha, God, thank you, Jesus. So, Father, break that right now. Break, break that stubbornness that's in our minds to release that stuff and get rid of that stuff. Get rid of the offense. Get rid of, Lord God, the weakness, the infirmity that hinders us from walking with you. That hinders us from agreeing with you. Break the cycles right now. Break those, break the cycles of habitual coming and going and living in the flesh. Lord, we know that we are, we are flesh beings, but we are also spiritual beings. Just like Jesus, he was fully God and he was fully man. We are fully of your spirit, Lord God. We have your spirit, but we also have a flesh body. And they are contrary one to the other. And so we're saying today, we're drawing a line in the sand. And we're saying, Lord God, we're getting from, we're coming out of that sand pit. And we're standing on the rock. And we're saying to the sand that we're no longer living on shaky grounds. We're no longer living on follow ground. Lord God, we're standing on a solid foundation. And that's the word of God. And so we honor you right now that you're breaking those things off of our life. You're breaking those things off of our decisions in Jesus' name. And that everyone under the sound of my voice and media, Lord God, we're breaking those demonic, demonic demons that are trying their best to to handicap us. To handicap us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, every spirit, that deplorable infestation of that demonic spirit in the last days, multitudes of demons that are coming, that are trying to overthrow and wear out the saints. But we shall overcome, as Revelation 2 and 3 says, we shall overcome, we shall overcome. Whatever temptation come our way, we shall overcome. And we make that statement in boldly right now in the name of Jesus because the Spirit of God is going to undergird our confession. The Spirit of God is going to undergird our faith. The Spirit of God is going to undergird my God. And as we walk in victory, as we walk in victory in our spirit, we will be able to contain and control. Everything that's out of order in our lives. Just as God spoke in the book of Genesis, let there be. 
We say, Lord, let there be light in our lives. Let there be order in our life. Let there be stability and fortitude and faithfulness and endurance. Let there be overcoming power. Let there be, Lord God, a breaking in the realm of the spirit. Let there be an anointing, Lord God, to walk in oneness with you. You said how good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. It's like the oil, the oil. There's an anointing, Lord God, that you bring. And we receive it right now that you release to cause us to walk in oneness with you. Oneness with Jesus. He's our elder brother. Hallelujah. We want to be one with him. You say how good and pleasant. Hallelujah. Because there's an anointing in that. There's an anointing. The anointing comes once the oneness is attached. Once the oneness is made. Once the commitment is made, the all comes. The oil comes. Again, he said, how good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. It's like the oil. Unity is like oil. Unity is like oil. Agreement with the heavens, the will of the heavens being done in our life is oil. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, if those of you that have any ailments, any sickness, any disease, any, anything like that, let's just take this moment real quickly. Father, in Jesus' name, we sever and detach any disease, any afflictions of the body in the name of Jesus, any afflictions, Father God, any infirmities of the bodies in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua, we sever that, we detach that from us. And, Father, it is by the blood and body of Jesus, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that we can obtain and receive the free gift. Hallelujah. The free gift of grace and mercy that has been given to us through Jesus. It wasn't free for him. He laid his life down for it, but it, we receive it. And so we take the anointing of Isaiah 53 right now. And we believe the report of the Lord. Touch your body, wherever, you, wherever that is. Lord God, touch now in Jesus' name. Touch now in Jesus' name. <clears throat> in Jesus' name. Ears in Jesus' name. Stubborn mindsets in Jesus' name. Manda shada boko sarada deba ishamano kote asaya. In the name of Yeshua. Shanda ba kasiya da boko shada ba. Even those that are on a social media, if you have any type of sickness, disease, infirmity. Receive, receive what Yeshua done in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> receive, receive. So, Lord, I receive what you have done through the cross, the healing of my body, the healing of my soul, the salvation of my spirit, the resurrection of my spirit, the coming to life again. In my spirit, the most important thing is salvation. If there's someone under the sound of my voice, or rather watching by airway, if you don't know the Lord, oh my God, you are missing eternity in being with him. But more so, you're missing him walking with you right now. You're missing everything that we just got through talking about. Being able to overcome. Being able to endure. Being able to exercise your faith. Being able to become one with him. Being able to overcome Mystery Babylon and all the things that happen, sometimes even in your dreams. Lord God, in Jesus' names, we thank you again for exposing this spirit in the last days. That we have... 
and, and my God, we have a last day's discernment to be able to discern in this generation the things of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Amen. I pray that something 